I started twirling when I was six. Mama sawed off the bottom of a broom handle and Uncle Carbo slapped some sort of silver paint, well, gray, really, on the bottom of it and I started twirling. Later on, Mama hit the daily double on horses named Spin Dry and Silver Revolver and she took it as a sign. So she got me lessons at the Dainty Deb Dance Studio where the lady Miss Aurelia taught some twirling on the side. I won the Ohio Juniors title when I was six, the Midwest Young Adult Division three years later, and when I was in high school, I finished fourth in nationals. <laughs> Mom and I were look like Statue of Liberty costumes, which she had to send clear to Nebraska to get, and Daddy wore a t-shirt with my name on it, April. My first name is April, and my last name is March. There were 4,000 people there, and when they called my name, golden balloons fell from the ceiling. <laughs> Nobody, not even Charlene Ann Morrison, ever finished fourth at my age. <laughs> oh, I've flown high and known tragedy, both. My daddy says it put spirit in my soul and steel in my heart. <laughs> my left hand was crushed in a riding accident by the horse named Big Blood Red. And though I came back to twirl, um, I couldn't do it at the highest level anymore. That was denied me by the horse named Big Blood Red. But you mustn't pity me though. <laughs> oh, by no means. Being denied showed me the way, showed me the glory that sits inside life where you can't see it. People think you're a twit if you twirl. It's a prejudice of the unknowing. There's this one time I was doing fire batons at a night game, and this guy comes out of the stands. I was doing triples, and he walks right past the halftime marshals, and he comes up to me. He's wearing this blue bead headband. I can still see it. He comes up, and he spits in my face. That was the only single time I ever dropped my batons, dropped them both in front of 60,000 people. And he smiles, see? <laughs> And he says this thing that I won't repeat. He called me a bodily part in front of half of Ohio. It was like being raped. It shows that beauty inspires hate and that hate and beauty is Satan. You haven't twirled, have you? I can tell by your hands. You can't imagine what it feels like to have that baton up in the air. I used to twirl with this girl who called it blue collars in. You see, what happens is the tons catch the sunlight when they're up. And when they go up, you go up too. You can't twirl if you're not inside the ton. When that ton's up over 20 feet in the air, it's like flying or gliding. You know, your hands are down, but your insides spin and rise and leave the ground. <laughs> Only a real twirler knows that. The secret for a twirler is the light. You live or die by the light. It's your fate. The best is a February sky clouded right over in the late afternoon. It's all background then. And what happens is the tons leave tracks, traces. They etch the sky and if you're hot if your hands have it you can draw on the sky charlene ann morrison god charlene ann she was inspired by something beyond man she won nationals nine years in a row unparalleled and unrepeatable last two years uh, charlene had leukemia and in the end, you could see right through her hands when she twirled. Charlene died with a ton 30 feet up in the air. Her mom swears by that. I did speed with Charlene at a regional in Fargo, and she may have been fibbing, but she told me that there's this one time that her tons erased while they turned. Like, the sky was a sheet of rain, and the tons were car wipers. And when she erased this certain part of the sky, she saw the face of the Lord God Jesus, and his hair was all rhinestones, and 
He was doing this beautiful singing, like the sound of a piccolo. People who thought Charlene was crazy probably never twirled a day in their lives. Twirling is the physical parallel of revelation. You can't know that. It's the throwing of yourself up to God, and it is hidden from Satan because it is wrapped and disguised in the midst of football. It is God throwing, spirit fire, and very few come to it. You have to grow eyes inside your heart to understand its message. And if it shows itself to you, it becomes your path to suffer ridicule, to be crucified by misunderstanding, to be spit at. There is one twirling that no one sees. At the winter solstice, we go to a meadow that God showed us just outside of Green Bay. The God throwers come December 21st. There's snow, sometimes deep snow, and our clothes fall away. And we stand unprotected while the acolytes bring the tongs. They're ebony tongs with razors all along the shafts. They're about three feet long. One by one, the twirlers throw two tons each, 30 feet up, and as the tons go into the air and fall back, they cut your hands. The razors arch into the sky, and find God, and then come down and take your blood and crucifixion, and the red drops draw God on the ground. And if you're up with the tons, you can look down and see him revealed, red on white, red on white. You can't imagine, you can't imagine how wonderful that is. I started twirling when I was six, but I didn't really twirl until my hand was crushed by the horse named Big Blood Red. I've seen God's face from 30 feet up, and I know him. Listen, I'll leave my silver baton here for you, lying here as if I forgot it. And it can be yours. It can be your burden. It is the eye of the needle. I leave it here for you. <laughs>